This is the story of how the Lord used a group of wannabe jihadis, a crew of cowardly police, a humble Christian woman, and yes, even me, to provide David the sign he needed and change the course of Christian apologetics on YouTube. Welcome back to Reason Answers, your home for intellectual arguments supporting Christianity and critiquing Islam. It's not every day that we see God's loving hand steering the course of history. He has given us eyes to see and brains to decide for a reason. We are not puppets being made to speak, nor robots following predetermined programming. I do not go around claiming God has orchestrated history to my benefit or claiming to have special knowledge of his will. Yet, when I look back at the events of the past month and a half, it is hard to see anything but providence at work and the outcome as miraculous. Let me take you back in time and give some context. Please allow me a few minutes to speak about my journey before bringing David in. I promise it's all related and all necessary to fully understand God's hand in this. In the beginning, God said, let there be light. Okay, maybe not that far back. Four years ago, I became interested in Islam after seeing a David Wood video. This eventually led me to starting a YouTube channel, which is something I never imagined myself doing before. I didn't know how much, if at all, I'd talk about Islam. But little by little, God gave me a passion for reaching Muslims above all else. In the first years, the channel was little more than a hobby, a fun way to talk about my faith, but definitely not a serious ministry. Life eventually got in the way, spurred on by a hard drive failure, and I took an extended break from YouTube, returning in December 2021. This time, things would be different. I would think things through, study how to improve, and seek out spiritual advice, not just run the channel as a casual hobby. I wanted to maximize my impact, in other words. The focus paid off. I started meeting people that gave me new perspectives, making new insights in my research, and producing videos that people found not just informative, but also entertaining. I was invited to a YouTube Apologist Fellowship. At the April meeting, we talked about our upcoming plans, as usual. But something about the conversation steered me into thinking bigger. A through-the-Bible-in-one-year apologetic study was proposed. Afterwards, I began to think, what if we could make that vision a reality? And God began to put something more on my heart. A few days later, I was invited to another fellowship group. This one was different. It was made up of real-life missionary organizations that happened to also have YouTube channels, as opposed to YouTube hobbyists who happened to have a ministry. I was feeling a call. But the call was insane. I had less than 9,000 subscribers, far too few to consider full-time mission work. Yet, I put rationality aside and started praying, God, I don't know what you have in store for me. I don't know how this could ever work out. But if you are able to use me, I am ready to go wherever you call me, whatever the cost. Just give me a sign. Within a couple days, two people emailed me with serious offers to help the channel however they could. In four years of doing this, the two most serious offers for help I ever received both arrived within days of me praying for a sign. This could be no coincidence. I had my sign. What does any of this have to do with David Wood, you ask? I came here to learn about God's providence in David's life, and you are blabbing on and on and on about yourself. What gives? Patience, my friend. We are getting there. 
I began to work on a mission statement, a vision for the future of Reasoned Answers and the role I had to play in God's kingdom. Meanwhile, David dropped a bombshell. After 13 years on YouTube, he would be deleting his channel and leaving the platform to concentrate on building an unbendable ministry from his own website. I've been making YouTube videos for 13 years and YouTube has gotten worse every single year I've been on the platform. It would be one thing if they had reasonable people enforcing rules. They don't. They've programmed bots to delete videos and channels, and the people who review the appeals are activists who use their positions to decide what they want the world to see. The people who decide what we're allowed to say on YouTube are morally insane. They are absolute lunatics. The time I spend explaining YouTube's community guidelines to YouTube could be spent building something they can't control. And so I'll be deleting my channel next month. Although David carefully explained his motives, explained he would still be making videos and even appearing on YouTube in many ways, the community reaction was overwhelmingly negative. Post after post poured in, begging him not to delete. Now, David had not made this announcement lightly. He'd been thinking about it for years. He had thought about it from every possible angle he could and knew that he had to delete the channel. As he would later say, he was 99% certain it would happen. The only thing that could change his mind was a divine sign. Earlier today, I would still, I was, I'm granting the, the possibility that something could change my mind because, you know, God could give me a sign or something like that, or someone could make a, you know, an airtight case, but I was still like, you know, 99 to one in favor of deleting my channel. In response to the complaints, David released another video carefully explaining that he had to delete the content, not just stop posting or else he would eventually be banned by new bogus strikes coming in on the old content. Why don't you just leave your channel up while you go build other channels and platforms? Let's recap. It's a matter of time before they delete my channel. It's almost happened multiple times. They've been getting more and more aggressive. They keep coming up with new rules, and then they ban your old videos based on the new rules. The reason my channel is still up right now is because we keep arguing with YouTube to keep it up. But that isn't going to work forever. And remember, what happens if they delete my channel? I'm gone from YouTube forever. Is that eventually going to happen unless I figure a way around it? Definitely. So when you tell me to keep my channel, what you're really telling me is, David, leave your channel up and go do your other things and you'll soon be banned forever. I understood David's motives, but like everyone else, I was hesitant. Surely there must be a better way. Then, inspiration struck me out of the blue. What if David deleted the content, but not the actual channel, thus retaining the subscriber base as a tool for someone else to use? Was the idea planted in my mind by God himself? I'll leave that up to you to decide. The argument was crafted, the video recorded, and a week later, the editing done. Now the question was how to get David to see the video. I tried to contact David in several ways and asked a mutual friend to ask him to watch. The friend said he would. However, David didn't watch the video, at least not at this time. Meanwhile, David put out a video asking people for channels he should recommend before he blew up his. I started collecting the data for my own benefit. I thought perhaps I might make a video on the subject for my channel. And in any case, I love working with data as a super data nerd. The following week, David was live with Robert Spencer, and I got the idea to ask him if he wanted the data for himself. He saw my chat message and said yes. I sent the data off the next morning. Weeks went by and I heard nothing, nor did David do any videos recommending any channels. I assumed nothing would come of it. But then, on the afternoon of Sunday, June 26th, 
David emailed me, saying he had lost the original email. I replied back with the data again and added that I could come on live to talk about it and save him some work. He said it was a good idea and asked if I could go live that evening. I said I could, but that if I had 24 hours, I could also make clips of the channels for him. We agreed to meet Monday evening. Meanwhile, 4,000 miles away, some poor misguided Muslims noticed that their God was too weak to stop a tiny British woman named Hatun Tosh from destroying Islam. They decided it was time to take matters into their own hands and stole her Quran in broad daylight, with cameras running. The police were called, but they decided to arrest the victim rather than take on the large Muslim crowd surrounding her. Chants of Allahu Akbar filled the air, and a single voice, the voice of Hatun, replied, Jesus Christ is Lord. The stone god had won the battle. The cowardly police did what was easy instead of what was right, and removed Hatun on a bogus charge that they knew wouldn't stick. The devil thought he had won the battle. No one would be leaving Islam at Speaker's Corner today. But the true God was actually at work. David heard about the incident, and his mind started working. How can I respond? In my original email to David, I had asked him to watch my video about the future of his channel in exchange for the data. He hadn't done so, but now that I was coming on, he made sure to watch right before he went live Monday night. After covering the channel recommendations, I got the chance to ask David about that video. Live for all to hear. So then the other housekeeping matter I have for you is I also put out a video suggesting that instead of actually <coughs> deleting your channel, that you just delete all the content and then you either give the channel, I suggested to Anthony Rogers, or you sell the channel. And of course I suggested to myself for that. Um, yeah, and you, uh, I, I, wa I watched your video. I watched your video specifically because you, you asked me to watch it in the, uh, in the email about this, uh, about this live stream. David acknowledged that it was a good argument, but he still really wanted to delete his channel. The only, the only flaw there is you underestimate how hilarious I think it would be to delete my channel. <laughs> As the conversation went on, inspiration struck David. What if the channel were to become a supergroup, a collaborative resource for the apologetics community? I believe that in that exact moment, he changed his mind live on the air. So, uh, and, and ju ju just so you know, Thaddeus, as soon as you started suggesting bidding, other people started saying, whatever he bids, we will outbid him. <laughs> there, there are people offering giant piles of money uh for uh for for the for the channel here um yeah bob told me he was gonna outbid me, bob so. bob 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 put in a <laughs> bob put in bob said he'd outbid you on on, on anything <laughs> hey but by, by the <laughs> you you know bob yeah uh, he has a monthly fellowship for youtube apologists and i've been participating in that what uh you ever think about doing like a super group channel? Uh, you know what I'm talking about? That. You know what I'm talking about? Like yeah. super group, like, like, like you pick like four or five people and you, you guys all post on a channel. Yeah. I, I, I did never occurred to me, but I, I get what you're saying. Uh, I'm going to blurt this out now without seriously thinking about it. If you wanted to run the ch and again this is only because the people with tattoo yesterday ticked me off enough to say how can i how can i do something that will annoy them and uh <laughs> giving hatoon more access to something would uh would would help that if you wanted to put together a little super group of like four or five people who can all use the channel. It doesn't mean they're posting all their content. I think it's good to have your own channels and then like, you know, once a week or something like that, each person, you know, tosses something into the mix or something like that. Um, 
man, I feel like I'm just going to change my mind as soon as I stop, but it'll be too late because I will have said I will have said it, and then I'll be <laughs> and then I'll feel and then I'll feel bound to a to stick with my deal. Uh, if you wanted to take the channel, stick with your deal as far as you know deleting the content, except for maybe let's say ten view. If you're if you're doing it as a super group, you can actually leave a few things up, like Nabil's testimony, uh, a couple of the the higher, a couple of the a couple of the videos that have performed long, long term, uh, and still get lots of views, just to keep things going. Uh, I would take your introductory bid. After the stream, we had a good chat about God's work in our lives and this process. He said that he was strongly leaning towards not deleting and would offer the channel either to Hatoon or myself if she declined. Earlier that day, Hatoon had been released without charges, as expected. The Stone God's victory didn't even last 24 hours. By the next day, when David streamed with Hatoon, his mind seemed made up. The channel was hers if she wanted it. If you want my channel um, to take it over, you can have it if you want. Uh, but I've talked to Reason Answers last night, and I told him if... if uh, because he wants it he wants it and uh he wants to, he wanted to buy it he's offering he's making bids and they're saying i said okay you don't need to be putting in bids take your first offer even though you've already been massively outbid by people like bob the builder and so on uh i said but if he if he uses it as like a super group where you know you and bob and him and some others can all uh post and uh keep sending out content to those subscribers after thoughtful prayer and a conversation with me hatoon accepted and david made it official. Tomorrow night, live, I'm going to delete my videos. Should be a fun live stream. Afterwards, instead of deleting my channel, I'm going to transfer ownership to Hatun, giving her access to all of my subscribers. Now, you might be thinking, big deal, a few coincidences came together, that's all. Maybe. But think again, how much had to go just right for all this to happen? If that now forgotten commenter hadn't recommended David Wood, I probably would have never become his fan or started learning about Islam. If my hard drive didn't fail, I don't take a break and I'm not back with new dedication at the right time. If I'm not invited to two fellowships in two weeks, I don't get pushed towards ministry. If I don't pray for a sign, any offer to help that came in wouldn't have had any special meaning. If those emails didn't come, I'm not pushed towards drafting a mission statement. Without that push, I don't have a concrete vision where I'm going and as persuasive of a case to make. If I don't get the inspiration to share my data with David, he has no reason to contact me. If David looked at the data quicker, he has no reason to have me on and watches the video when it will have no effect on his thinking. If a tune isn't arrested, David has no reason to start reconsidering. If I went on Sunday night, David probably isn't yet ready to respond to Hatoon's arrest. If David doesn't have the conversation with me, he doesn't get the supergroup idea and probably dismisses the idea of offering it to Hatoon. That's an awful lot of coincidences, all leading to one thing. David not deleting his channel, after all. And, by the way, David had previously dismissed the idea of giving the channel to someone. The reason that's the reason that's not a great idea is it's kind of a it's kind of not cool for the people who subscribe, you know what I mean? So dismiss it all if you like. But for me, I can't see anything but the hand of providence at work. I can see a god who is real and active trampling a mute idol who needs his followers to take action, lest he cease to exist. I can see a God who is greater, a God whose triune name is Yahweh. David's mission will continue and grow on a new website free of YouTube censors. My mission is just getting started. God has given me a vision to unite the apologetics community and bring countless Muslims to Christ. I look forward to aiding Hatoon as she takes over the largest apologetics ministry on YouTube and reaches thousands of new Muslims. 
I 100% believe that the Lord is in charge and everything is exactly as it should be. All the forces of hell, that is Allah, couldn't even stop us for 24 hours. The so-called best of all planners didn't see this coming. He aided the kingdom and accelerated his own destruction. Yahweh is greater. Thanks for watching.